What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Buster Bookie Show, our WNBA edition. We're back with our guy, LB. Catch him on Twitter at LB underscore PRA underscore locks. And join his VIP. It is free right now, so take advantage of it. His best plays are posted over there. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Bust Your Bookie Show. What we do here, we give you guys our expert predictions along with the opportunity for a, for an opportunity to win some money. I was going to say a $40 giveaway, but we've got three plays today. What we're going to do is do a $20 giveaway if LB sweeps the card. If you would like to qualify, all that you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. You have to be a subscriber. Number two, comment below 3-0, and give us the good vibes, and then number three, like the video. If you do all that and LB goes 3-0, and I'll cash up somebody 20 bucks. Only one game for us to talk about, but we will have three plays. Um, anyways, I know uh, I told the uh, Chicago game and the over yesterday. I know that was one of our plays. I know that one hit. Tell us a little bit about how we did otherwise, LB. Uh, put out five plays for the uh, full Friday, you know, slate that the uh, WNBA has been giving us. Uh, just didn't quite get the the best read on uh how aggressive Aaliyah Boston was in the uh, the Fever and the uh, Lynx game. She really got her scoring going uh, to to try and keep the team close. Just didn't get to touch many rebounds or make many assist plays uh, like we were going. But uh, if, if you played her PRA, you probably cashed it. Uh, I think the number was right on the line uh, for PRA for that game. Uh, and we uh, doubled in on that game and uh, went for the Fever's team total, was cash as well. Uh, Fever didn't quite get inside of the original spread that was given. I was I was thinking that they had a chance to win at home, uh, but the Lynx really turned it up on them in the second half. But uh, the team total was right where we needed it, be, needed it, so we went one and one in that game. And then uh, the dream just came out uh, flat, if you will. Uh, they weren't able to get up until the second half, and they needed overtime in order to finish the finish the job. So uh, we lost the first half on the dream. Uh, in in that aspect, but the other two plays, the under for the Aces game, um, uh, did well for us, and then the Sky got a, a good win, like we called it. So three out of five isn't bad. If you played them all single, then uh, you should be up, and so that's how we're going to get it. You know, uh, get the majority of the plays cashed. No, definitely, we will take three out of five. And uh, just a heads up, if you guys are wondering, we will not have the graphics up today. Uh, I'm a little short on time, so. Not going to have a chance to go back and get the graphics in, but we wanted to make sure that we did get a video out and give you guys our uh, three plays for today. So anyways, we will jump right into it now. The one game that we're talking about, Phoenix Mercury, 17 and 18 on the year, taking on the Seattle Storm, who are 20 and 14. The uh, Seattle team is favored by six and a half here, but we're talking about three player props. The first one is going to be Miss Skylar Diggins-Smith, averaging 14.6 points. <coughs> 2.9 rebounds, 6.4 assists, and what LB is known for is the PRA, and that is what we're looking at here. Break it down for us, LB. What do we like here? This is uh, Skylar Diggins' uh, revenge spot. She's had this game circled on her on her calendar. She's she's, she's played well in the first matchup. Uh, you know, since returning to Phoenix or or playing against her former team, they really did her, uh, you know, a disservice from her own opinion before she decided to uh, switch teams. But so I think there's a little bit of a personal vendetta in this. The the storm of offsos uh, benefited from her taking advantage of her driving matchups to get more scoring inside as she, uh, you know, looks to penetrate. So we're going to see her scoring uh, increase in this game, and uh, that'll help us get over that that total. We, she's she's always facilitated the ball well gotten a hold to a couple long rebounds as well, but mainly uh, looking for her to get our scoring over this line here. Uh, just being all around involved in a revenge spot game for her is our, is our angle on uh, Skylar Diggins-Smith in this matchup. Lock it in. We're taking the over par for Diggins-Smith as our first play of the day. But yeah, make sure you guys are paying attention because again, the graphics will not be up. I will repeat them at the very end, but that'll be our first play. All right, play number two, we're looking at the veteran, Diana Tarazi, on the year averaging 15 points, four rebounds, 3.3 assists. We're looking at her rebound and assist line, seven and a half. You know, I just pulled her up. I know she's been a veteran 20 years. Is that right? She's been in the league 20 years. Right. I could right. not believe that. So Water I give her more. props. Still doing her thing, 15 points a game as a 20-year veteran. 
I give Diana her props. So go ahead and break it down what we like on this one. Yeah. She's one of, you know, definitely one of the greatest WNBA players of all time in all aspects. But uh, we're just we've seen her decline, her usage, uh, Kalia Copper, uh, Sophie Cunningham uh, and some of the other supporting players have gotten just more opportunity to uh, contribute. And so Diana's kind of taking a back seat to that. Um, we we were able to cash on her PRA being under 25 and a half uh, just just a few days back. But they've dropped that number way down to 21 and a half. Uh, so we just really got to take advantage of how the lines are moving. Don't want to get caught in a bad spot trying to take her under, you know, on on PRA if if the lines are dropping because she she can always score. But just assists and rebounds wise, she's just been less of a, a part of the offense. And so I think we get a tight edge on the under seven and a half to go under rebounds and assists on this one. So uh, we're looking at Tarasi possibly to score but not to be as involved in the other aspects of how they run their offense and defense uh, uh, through her uh, with less usage on the rebound and assist side. Lock it in. We're taking Tarazi under seven and a half, her rebounds and assist only. All right. It's just two categories, rebounds and assists for Tarazi under. All right. Our third and final play now, we're going to take a look at Neneka Agumake. I hope I got that right. Yep. <laughs> 16.8 points per game, 7.7 .7 rebounds, two and a half assists. And we're just looking at her rebound line here. Uh, I believe eight plus rebounds, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Break it down, LB. That's right. Uh, we're looking at eight rebounds for Neneka. She's probably in a good position to sprinkle on the double double as just a side play for this game if you're, you know, interested in it. The Sun just do not rebound well in the interior. And so this, I'm sorry, not the Sun, the Mercury rather. They just don't rebound as well on this, uh, in this matchup. Uh, Griner doesn't get to the rebounds as much. Uh, Sophie Cunningham and the guards rebound a little bit more actively than, than others. And so, that leaves opportunity for front court players to really uh, have higher rebounding marks against the Mercury in the last few matchups. Naneka's in that spot. Uh, she's all over the floor, uh, offensively and defensively. And so she, for the Storm to really cover this spread and, and get the win that they are probably going to see here as, as we lean towards the Storm winning this game, halftime and full time was another look I was, uh, you know, leaning towards. It's going to take the rebound and uh, taking advantage of offensive rebound spots and defensive rebound spots to get their break going is going to be what separates the storm in this game. So it's going to go through the neck. So we're looking at her eight plus rebounds is an alternate line. Uh, 8.5 is the regular line. So you could take her to get that ninth one or that tenth one if you want a little extra sprinkle. But I do see her being a, uh, a dominant force on the inside just because Griner isn't as mobile. Lock it in. We're taking Neneka eight plus rebounds as our third and final play. All right, here's a recap on all three plays. We're taking Diggin Smith, her over points, rebounds, and assist line. We're taking Tarasi under seven and a half rebounds and assists. And then, as mentioned, Neneka eight plus rebounds for our three plays for today. Set your notifications. We're coming out with videos every single day baseball, WNBA, and of course, we've now started with our college football and NFL shows. I did my individual shows, and we did do group shows as well, and LB joined us on, uh, what was it, the college football one? Uh, yep. LB was with us yep. on that. Go so. Army. We're shooting for Army to get the win today. Had a tough injury in the uh, Duke, Duke game last night. The running back we are going for got hurt in the first half, but uh, uh, hopefully Army will get it done today, and, and Akron will score no points today. I hear you on that. I hear you. Yeah, I know you. I know that was a big play that you put out there. So be sure you guys check out those other videos. We did do a video also with Spin Doc earlier today. Our strikeout guy, uh, he gave out four plays on the show. And we are doing giveaways on both my show and his. And, of course, on this one as well, which reminds me, if you want to qualify for the giveaway in this show, don't forget, number one, subscribe. Number two, comment below 3-0. and oh, Give us the good vibes. And then number three, like the video. You do all that, and we go 3-0. and I'll cash up somebody 20 bucks. Our motto on the show is to bust your bookie. Let's go for the 3-0 and sweep today. Let's get it. Nine.